Hello everyone. The topic for today is circles. So we'll be discussing a few terminologies related to circles and then we'll be discussing a few properties and solve a few questions based on the properties. So without further ado, let's get started. So first let's uh, first define what circle is. Right? So circle is basically an object that is equidistant from a point at the center. So that center is basically the center of the circle and uh, uh, and then let's discuss a few terminologies related to it right so the fixed distance from the center to the endpoints of the circle is basically known as the radius which is noted by r so we have radius which is uh, denoted by uh, the notation r so it's basically line segments whose endpoints are at the center and at any point on the circle right and the plural of radius is radii and then let's see what a chord of a circle is so chord is basically a segment whose endpoints are on the circle so it's basically a line segment whose endpoints are on the circle so as you can see there can be infinite number of chords that can be drawn on a circle there can be infinite number of chords from one point and then you can have chords from any point in the circle, right? Uh, so that's chord. And one special type of chord is the diameter. So diameter is basically the longest chord in the circle. And it is basically a chord that passes through the center of the circle. So the endpoints would be on the circle and it would also pass through the center. So the diameter is usually denoted by d and there is a relationship between the diameter and the radius so the relationship is d equals two times the radius so you can see that from this end point to the center is r and again from this end point to the center is another r so the diameter is equal to two times the radius right and then let's define tangent so what is tangent tangent is basically a line segment that intersects a circle in exactly one point so it's basically a line that intersects the circle at exactly one point so if you draw the tangent to this point so this is the tangent so as you can see there can be infinite number of tangents that can be drawn on a circle right so this is this tangent is to this point let me show it with a different thing. So the tangent is for this point. The tangent is for this point, right? And then we can draw a tangent for the other point, right? So all these would be tangents. Next, let's talk about angles and arcs. So let's draw another circle here. This is the center of the circle. Let's denote the center as O. So an arc is basically a curved section on the circle. So any curved section is a is an arc. So if we take this segment, so this is basically an arc. Now if you are dividing the circle into two parts, so we'll basically have a minor arc, which is a smaller arc, and the major arc, which is the bigger arc, right? Unless we are dividing the circle into two equal parts right so unless we are dividing the circle into two equal parts we'll be having a major arc and we'll be having a minor arc right so when we are dividing the circle into two equal halves then what we'll have is the line segment that divides the circle into two equal halves would be the diameter and these two would be two semicircles right to half circles so we call it as two semicircles and now let's talk about inscribed angle and central angle so central angle is an angle whose vertex is at the center so an angle whose vertex is at the center and whose sides are basically the radius so this alpha so alpha is equal to the central angle and again as you can say that there can be infinite number of central angles right 
So this can be a central angle. So all of these are central angles, right? So what is an inscribed angle? Inscribed angle is an angle whose vertex is on the circle and whose sides intercept an arc of a circle. So whose sides are so basically, beta is the inscribed angle. And from any arc, there can be infinite number of inscribed angles. So it is an angle whose vertex is on the circle. So the vertex of the angle is on the circle and whose sides basically intercept the arc of a circle. Right? So sides of this angle intercept the arc of a circle. So these are the inscribed angles. So beta is inscribed angle so now let's understand the relationship between the central angle and the inscribed angle if we have a same arc right so uh, if we have a same arc let's try it let's draw another circle and try to explain this uh, property here so if we have a circle and if we have an arc a b and the central angle extended by this arc is alpha and the inscribed angle extended by this arc is beta right so the relationship between alpha and beta is alpha equals to two times of beta so this is a very important property so an arc a b or any arc would subtend two times the inscribed angle at the center and the inscribed angle subtended by an arc is equal so any inscribed angle which is subtended by this arc ab will have equal values so all these angles are equal so these two are very important properties so now that we have understood the property let's try to solve a question on this property okay so i'll post that question and uh, give it a minute try and then we'll discuss the solutions okay so just give me one moment while i put up the question and uh, here it is so this is the question Give it a minute try and then uh, we'll be back with the solution. Okay, so I hope you guys have given it a try. So now let's try to look at the question. And since it's an SAT question, we'll also talk about a bit of a trick uh, and how to get this question solved quickly, okay? So in this question, it says that uh, it's the, the figure is given and AV is given as 3 and CD is given as 2. And we are asked which of the following must be true. And we are given three statements. One is angle ABC and angle DCB have equal measures. AB is parallel to CD and 2 times A equals 3 times C. And now if you carefully look at the options, we have A which is 1 and 2, B 1 and 3, C 1 only and D is 3 only. So one thing that is common between option A, B and C is all of them has option 1. So if we can attack option 1 and if we can disprove it, then A, B, C, we can eliminate A, B, C together, right? So in your SAT exam, that's what we'll do. Whichever option has, uh, whenever you come uh, across a question like this and whichever option will have, uh, a statement multiple times we'll try to attack that statement so that if we can disprove that we can eliminate those options right so here we'll do that and then we'll also solve this question traditionally so here it is given that angle a b c which is a b c subtended by the arc a c and we have angle d c b d c b subtended by the arc b d so what we have learned is angle subtended by the same arc is same we have equal measures right so angle subtended by ac is d angle subtended by ac is also b 
so we can say that these two angles are equal let's say these are beta angle subtended by bd is angle a let's put it as alpha bd is c let's put it as alpha so we can say that angle a and angle c are equal angle b and angle d are equal but we cannot that there's no way of proving that angle b and angle c are equal because they are subtended by different arcs if the length of ab and uh, bd are same then we can then there's a possibility right that's but in this question there's no way to say that ac and bd are having equal measure so one is incorrect so if one is incorrect we can eliminate a we can eliminate b we can eliminate c and we can say that d is the correct answer right that's what we'll do in the sat exam but right now since we are learning we'll, we'll attack all the options and we'll uh, try to get a better understanding of this question okay uh, let's next is given that ab is parallel to cd so ab and cd uh, so what we can determine from this figure is alpha so in triangle a e b and triangle e c d we have all the angles are equal right basically angle a is equal to angle d angle b equal to angle c right and so the third angle of course would be equal and also they are particularly opposite angles right so this both of the triangles are similar so the ratio of the sides would be equal right but there's no way we can say that ab is parallel to cd the only information we have is these so b is also uh two is also incorrect now let's see what uh whether we can get three right so since the triangles are similar we know the ratio of the sides are equal so we already have the ratio of the side a b and c d right which is given because a b and c d both of them are given so let's see so let's say this is gamma this is gamma here so the side opposite to gamma is a b so we'll write a b the side opposite to gamma for e c d is c d equals we have to do a e and c e right so opposite to beta for a e b is a e so we have a e over opposite to beta is c e we have c e so the value of a b is 3 the value of c d is 2 equals a e over c e and then we have 3 times c e equals 2 times a e and basically that is what we have in statement 3 so statement 3 is correct 1 and 2 are not correct so d is the correct answer right so in terms of understanding we have done all this uh, to understand this question but in terms of solving in the exam we will try the first approach we will take the statement that has multiple occurrence try to attack the statement first and then we will solve the question uh, by eliminating the options and then going with the other options right so let's move on to another concept now okay so what we will do now is uh, learn a few formulas uh, on circles okay so let's get started so let's say we have a circle with the center as o and uh, the radius of the circle is r okay so we'll find out what the circumference is what the area is and then we'll also find out the circumference of a sector or length of an arc right and area of a sector so these are the four things that we'll try to find out for this circle so circumference is basically the distance around the circle is known as the circumference 
and the formula for circumference is 2 times pi times r or in terms of diameter it is pi times the diameter okay very simple formula in so the area of a circle is pi times the radius square or in terms of diameter is pi d square over 4 okay so this is the formula for circumference and for area now what is the length of an arc very important formula especially for SAT so let's say we have an arc with subtends angle theta at the center okay so we are our objective is to find the length of this arc let's call it a b so the length of any arc which subtends an angle of theta at the center is theta over 360 times 2 pi r so we'll write it in terms of radius but you can always do it in terms of the diameter as well right so pi times 360 times 2 pi r would give us the length of the arc what is the area of a sector area of a sector is pi times sorry theta times 360 times pi r square so area of a sector is theta times 360 times pi r square now why we have theta over 360 let's try to understand that so the total angle at the center is 360 degree right we are trying to get the value of the arc that is only subtended by theta out of 360 right so basically it is the ratio of theta over 360 times whenever we are trying to find the area we are using the area whenever we are trying to find the circumference we are using the circumference formula right so uh, with these concepts in mind let's try to solve a question so what we have here is uh, let me put this question up and as before we will give you a minute of time to solve this question and uh, then we'll talk about the solution so i'll give you a minute time and in the meantime i'll set up the question and then uh, uh, just pause the video uh, once the question is up and uh, once you have the solution we'll get back to it and we'll discuss so now the question is up give this a try and then we'll talk about it a little bit more okay so i think you guys have given it a try so now let's uh, see the answers or let's see the solution rather so it's given that the length of the arc a b of this circle o is 8 pi so a b is 8 pi and what is the central angle is given as 60 degrees right so what is the formula for length of the arc so length of r the formula is theta over 360 times 2 pi r right so what is theta theta is given as 60 so 60 over 360 times 2 pi r right and the length of the arc is given as 8 pi so this is equals to 8 pi so if we simplify 0 0 cancels out 6 1 is 6 6 6 is 36 pi and pi cancels out 2 times 1 is 2 2 times 3 is 6 so r is coming to 24 units right now the, now what's the question what is the number of square units in the area of the shaded region so we have to find the area of the shaded region so what's the formula for area area is equal to pi r square right pi r square so pi times r square is equals to pi times what is the radius radius is basically
24 so pi times 24 square times 60 over 360 right times 60 over 360 so this is 1 sixth so this is basically pi times 24 times 24 divided by 6 6 ones are 6 6 fours are 24 and 24 fours are 96 right so this is 96 pi so we will select d as the correct answer okay uh, if you have any doubts please feel free to put it on the comments and we'll try to address it uh, so now when that is done let's uh, move on to another concept so the concept that we are going to discuss is tangents and radii okay so we already discussed what is a tangent now we will do a, a few properties that are related to tangents okay so let's uh, let's get on to it uh, let's say we have a circle here and this is the point O which is the center a tangent as we discussed is a line that touches only one point on the circle so this is known as tangent now if you are drawing a radius to that point the radius makes 90 degrees with the tangent so this is very important so the radius which is at the point of tangent is equals to or is perpendicular to the tangent a very important property that we need to understand and uh, there's another property which is tangent drawn to a circle so let's look at another circle and let's draw a tangent from an external point right so from an external point we can basically draw two tangents right so we can basically draw two tangents now if you are drawing the radius at those tangent points we already know that radius will make 90 degree with the tangents so this is r this is r and we can draw this so if we uh, actually look into it we'll find that let's say this is point o let's say this is a b and c We'll see that a b o and o c a are actually congruent triangles so basically a b and a c are equal so a b is equals to a c so this is also an important property to remember but if we have time later i'll show you how this property come into place but uh, these are the two important properties that we need to know in uh, for tangents and radii so basically the relationship between tangents and radii so let's solve a question on this and then we'll move on to another topic so i'll just put up the question as before and uh, again you'll have a minute of time to uh, basically try this question out and then we'll discuss the solution as well so here goes the question and yeah, give it a try and we'll be back in a minute okay so hope you guys had the chance to try this question out so we'll move on directly to the solution so this as we discussed earlier is uh, basically a tangent coming from an external point so the same rules will follow right so as we talked about before uh, it basically divides the so this uh, tangents so this angle is 90 this is 90 and these two triangles which is triangle a o p and triangle uh, o b p these are congruent triangles right 
or these are actually equal triangles right so all the sides and all the angles are equal and what we discussed is AP is equals to PV which is because they are congruent right so now we know that this is 90 this is 90 this entire angle is 60 so this is a quadrilateral right O B A P is a quadrilateral so summation of all the angles would be 360 degrees right so this is equal to 60 plus 90 plus 90 plus angle AOB right so 360 is equals to 180 plus 60 is 240 plus angle AOB so what is angle AOB angle AOB that's equals to 120 degrees so this angle we found out is 120 degrees and what else is given is OP is given as 14 over pi right so OP which is basically this side is equal to 14 over pi right so what do we need to find out from this congruent triangle is basically the radius because we are at the end of the day the length of the minor arc is what we need to find out so what is the formula for length of the minor arc it's equal to theta over 360 times 2 pi r right so we already know theta is 120 over 360 times we have 2 pi r so what is the only unknown the only unknown is r so using the triangle formula we'll try to find out the value of r now as you know this is a or these two triangles are congruent and even for this triangle we know the value of one side right so if you draw this triangle separately it's a right angle triangle so this is 90 and this is 30 and this is 60 right so 30 60 90 triangles are special triangles and there's a ratio of the sides that uh, are that actually is very important to know and basically the hypotenuse value is given right which is basically 14 by uh, pi 14 by pi so for a special triangle like this which is a 30 60 90 triangle so what happens is the ratio of the sides so the one op opposite to uh, 30 if it is x opposite to 60 would be 2x and opposite to 90 would be uh, sorry opposite to 60 would be root 3x and opposite to 90 would be 2x so opposite to 30 is basically the radius which is r and opposite to 90 is 14 over pi so so 14 over pi is basically 2x so x would be 7 over pi and x is basically the radius which is r so we'll plug in the value of the radius so 2 pi r over 3 so r is 7 over pi so pi pi cancels out so the solution for this question is 14 over 3 so this is the length of the minor arc. and since we talked about the special triangles so let's quickly discuss the three special triangles that we have or basically two special triangles that we have so one is the 45 45 90 right so the ratio of the sides if this is x this is also x this would be root 3x and if it is a 30 60 90 triangle then this is 30 this is 60 and this is 90 so opposite to 90 would be 2x opposite to 30 would be x and opposite to 60 would be root 3x 
so these are also very important uh, and, and very useful information to know for your SAT exams. So we'll uh, conclude our session here. Uh, there will be another session on circles and then we'll move on to various questions on circles. But thank you so much for joining the session today. Uh, if you like the video, please uh, feel free to subscribe to our channel and uh, like the videos if you liked it. And uh, please uh, let us know in the comment section uh, whether you have any suggestions, uh, whether you would like us to solve any additional questions and any feedback is always welcome. So thank you so much and uh, you guys have a great day. Thanks again. Bye-bye.